Chris Lee and Blake Lovell of Southeastern 14 presented by Stakes. We're here to preview the Texas Bowl, that between Texas Tech and Ole Miss. That one is going to be played December 28th. Two teams with interesting seasons. Ole Miss sort of ended the season on a down note, losing a good number of games at the end after, a, what, a seven or eight no start. But chance at redemption for Lane Kiffin and the Rebels here in a bowl game. Yep. Um, as always, we don't really know what to expect once you get to bowl season and kind of the mindset and all those different things. But yeah, not exactly a a strong finish for for Ole Miss. And you know, I think there there's something to like I said, there's a lot of stuff um, off the field with Kiffin's situation and such. Uh, you know, in the final week or so, a couple of weeks, I guess there and um, you know, now all that's behind you and you you move forward and play a Texas Tech team that did finish the season pretty strong. Three straight wins, Kansas, Iowa State, Oklahoma. Um, and now, you know, try to build off of that uh, heading into a bowl game against uh, an SEC team here in Texas. Blake, I think bowl game performance sometimes is mindset. Do you want to be there? And the way Ole Miss ended its season versus the way Texas Tech ended its season. And, of course, Ole Miss had the distraction with Lane Kiffin thought to be taking the Auburn job until he didn't. And so there's that. But on the other hand, not a lot of opt-outs or maybe not any of significance for either team. Yeah, I mean, that's what we always say. I mean, we're recording this December the 14th. And as we've seen, there there can still be plenty of more yeah. opt-outs until the game is actually played in a couple of weeks. But for now... I mean, there's not a lot there in terms of, um, you know, what we've seen because we've talked about other games at this point, and it seems like we, we've said, oh, yeah, that top guy's out, that top guy's out, but not really, you know, that same situation here, I guess. It's it's certainly a little bit different. It looks like both teams at least have, you know, a, a pretty good core of guys that, that are going to be playing that were, you know, pivotal to them having good seasons, and so – yeah, at least that's that's something that this game has going for it. So if you assume all things are equal and, um, you know, kind of the main guys are going to be out there, it, it does make it more interesting. So, When Texas Tech has the ball, the Red Raiders average 33.6 points a game, Ole Miss giving up 24.2. Texas Tech has lost five fumbles, whereas Ole Miss has recovered 10. Tech has thrown 17 picks. Ole Miss has got seven. Tech likes to run the ball, 36, almost 37 rush plays a game. Also likes to throw it, 47 pass plays a game. That's a lot of plays here. Um, Tech is averaging 4.8 per rush play and 6 per pass play. Ole Miss giving up 5 and 5.6. Ole Miss has struggled at times, particularly against the run. Uh, the pass defense has been pretty underrated, but some of that has also been aided by a schedule that was very easy the first two-thirds of the season. Yeah, and I mean, Texas Tech is what? They've had three different quarterbacks that have played. Um, <clears throat> so that's, I mean, what? But I think it's, I was looking at the stat, all three of the quarterbacks have between 1,000 and 1,500 yards passing this season, um, which that's kind of an interesting thing. You probably don't see a whole lot in terms of having three different guys. Basically, I think Smith started the you know, first five games, Morton played the four, and then, um, yeah, so like it's, <laughs> It's a very, I'm looking at the layout here and it's like, yeah, like they've kind of all split equally there. And I know, um, you know, there, there've been uh, injuries and stuff involved in that, but, um, yeah, I mean, this is kind of an interesting matchup when you look at it and, you know, like you said, you look at it from that standpoint with Texas tech, I mean, offensively, certainly a team that's going to throw the ball a bit in terms of the, the, the passing numbers and such. And like we talked about with Ole Miss's defense, it seemed like, you know, there were some of those games where um, they just gave up a lot of yards on the ground, and maybe, like you mentioned, part of the part of the the early success was was due to the schedule, but then started to play some you know some better offenses and such, and that made it a little more um, interesting. So yeah, I think it's like we said. I mean, it's a a Texas Tech team that what put up forty three against Kansas, fifty one against Oklahoma. Um, you know, kind of played a low scoring game against Iowa State, but. I think a team that can put up some points here just based on, you know, how the offense has flowed at this point. Our channel is presented by Stakes. 
Predict sports better than the crowd for a chance to win NFTs with stakes. Players can submit their sports predictions against friends, other fans, and influencers forever. Don't let your sports genius go overlooked. Join stakes and have the best predictions captured in the moment. Go to playwithstakes.com forward slash 14. Use our invite code Southeastern14. Get a double welcome bonus. It is a predictions app. It's totally free. You can have some fun with this and help out those who help our channel. Okay, Blake, when Ole Miss has the ball, Rebels averaging 34.2 points a game, Tech giving up 29.5. Ole Miss, as we have said all year, likes to run it a good bit more than it likes to throw it. On average, 45 rushing plays and 32 passing plays. Again, sacks count as passing plays. Okay, per passing play, Ole Miss averages 6.6 yards, Tech giving up 6.8. Ole Miss averaging 6.3 per rush play. Tech giving up 5.6. Ole Miss has thrown nine picks. Tech has registered seven fumbles, uh, seven each recovered and given up by each side. Quinshawn Junkins, Judkins, excuse me, is, is just a handful for anybody, and I would expect a heavy dose of, of him in this game. Yeah, we've seen that a lot this season. Um, certainly. You know, uh, like we said, that was kind of the, the the go-to for Ole Miss in terms of just um, that was where they had the most success because, you know, the passing game was a little up and down in terms of, um, you know, we said Jackson Dart at times. There were things they did well in that area. Other times, I think it was just, hey, let's just lean on what we do best, and and that's running the ball. And um, like you said, I mean, Judkins just wound up being – I mean, I would say he came out of nowhere, but my goodness, uh, to have the season he had was just pretty, pretty remarkable. And, um, and yeah, I would ex- fully expect Ole Miss to kind of lean on that again here. And, um, you know, just given what they've done to this point, why would you not, right? Especially looking at Texas Tech on the defensive side and just looking at the numbers, um, it is a team that's given up some points and, uh, it's given up some, some yards on the ground, of course. So, uh, yeah, I think that's, you know, that's a pretty clear, I think, in terms of the offensive approach. For Ole Miss, uh, run, 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 and uh, that will probably be what we see a lot of in this game. Yeah, now one thing, Ole Miss has kind of got a hole at tight end right now with some injuries and some things like that, I think, or last I checked it did. Um, And Ole Miss can also throw. Uh, Jonathan Mingo and Malik Heath can be headaches to cover, so keep that in mind. Over, under on this game, 69 and a half as we do this on the 14th. The spread is Ole Miss by three and a half. That means a predicted final score of about 37-33 in Ole Miss's favor. Now, here's something interesting, Blake. You don't usually see this kind of spread, but if you take what the teams did this year, between that and the over-under, the the over-under should be around 61. Instead, it is 69 and a half. I don't know what you make of that or or where you see value in in this line here. I I think Ole Miss probably wins the game if it's up for it. I I just feel like Tech has been vulnerable both against the run and the pass. Judkins is one of the best backs in America. Lane Kiffin is phenomenal um, at just picking out what a team is not good at doing and exploiting that. I I feel like Ole Miss is going to win, and even as many points as – people think are going to be scored that over under feels a little bit high to me based on what the teams have done. Yeah, but it goes back to your first point, I think, and that's motivation schedule. and schedule. Well, that's there's another one. Yeah. I think it's motivation and schedule. Like it's those two things. Um, I, I, I can't say I'd be shocked. I think both teams are going to put up a lot of points here um, because I, I just think with Ole Miss, like you said, we look at Texas tech defensively and you would expect them to have some success here. Uh, that is Ole Miss and running the ball. But then I think you look at it from Texas Tech standpoint, and I don't know that there's, you know, is it this intim- is it that intimidating of a matchup against this Ole Miss, the Ole Miss defense? Because again, we are talking about the motivation and those kind of things. And I don't know. I'm sure there's been some kind of study done on this about scoring in bowl games and and that kind of stuff. But um, of course, we're going to talk about another game, uh, Iowa and Kentucky, that may not exactly fit that oh, mold. Goodness. But they may not score three points. Th- this game is the opposite, though, where I think there's going to be some points put up here, and so. I and again we're not my professional betters. We always say this, but I wouldn't be shocked if this this is a very high scoring game. Um I, I think again that as we always say, it's hard to predict bowl games and who wins and that kind of stuff. We we do our best, but I think Ole Miss is still the better team. But 
like you mentioned, it's a a matter of motivation. And you know, didn't end the season on a high note. Had to deal with all the Lane Kiffin stuff. Is he leaving? Is he staying? Um, maybe that that plays into to the the factor here in terms of how this game plays out. But I would probably still tend to lean towards Ole Miss. But I think the the higher scoring game is probably the better better choice here. Well, and let me give you some context. I'm, I'm going back and looking this up. I said Ole Miss gives up 24 points a game on average. And look, I think sometimes too much is making of, made of this because find me a team in the country doesn't stat pad a few games with an easy schedule with some shutouts and things. And Ole Miss gave up 10 to Troy in the opener. Troy ended up getting a lot better. Three to Central Arkansas and nothing to Georgia Tech. From that point on, uh, and really from the Vandy game on in particular, that, that average of 24, Ole Miss gave up at least at, in what, its last seven games. So, uh, now having said that, Ole Miss didn't give up more than 45. They gave up 45 to LSU, 28 to a and 30 to Bama, 42 to Arkansas. I guess the numbers really aren't that pretty. So, if you do like the under in this game, and I cited the the average that Ole Miss had given up, if you dig in a little bit more, what you will notice is that a lot of that scoring defense number was accumulated in the first three games, and when the competition got tougher, uh, that defense got a lot uglier. And the other thing too is you could you could run on Ole Miss at times, uh, so that will be something to watch to see how. Texas Tech can handle that. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's just I think points are the again we're not betting professionally, but I, I think points are the best bet here. I just I feel like both teams are going to score. I, I I just feel like this is one of those games. We always kind of circle some of those games in bowl season that you're like, all right, both offenses should find a way to to score, and, and I think that's probably what we're looking at here, just based on what we've seen from both teams uh, to this point. So. Okay, if you would like to bet and you think betting $11 to win 10 stinks, you need Brothrow. They're our new partner. They let you bet in all 50 states because Brothrow is not the house. Bettors have a fair chance at winning. It's the only sports betting platform that doesn't take a cut of every bet. You don't have to deposit money into a Brothrow account. So there's no deposits, no minimum bets, no need to connect your bank account. Bettors pay each other directly. There's a hassle-free sign-up process that lets you get in the actions into the action in seconds. Go to brothrow.com forward slash SE14. No apps. You got to do it online, but uh, we are getting a community set up there. We'll get that started shortly. So go and use that code and sign up and join our community, and I, I think you'll like it. Anyway, thanks for watching. Be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't. We are going to preview every single bowl game involving SEC teams for the bowl season. Got a lot of hoop stuff up as well, too, as the SEC is playing some very interesting basketball games these days. Anyway, he is Blake Lovell. I'm Chris Lee of Southeastern 14, presented by Stakes. We will see you again soon.